everybody, and uh, welcome back to another exciting episode of 31 Days of Indie Horror. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody. I've got my awesome, awesome, awesome special guest here, David Lane. Uh, how are you doing, David? I am amazing. Uh, now, David, if you remember correctly from everybody, he's been in the fir- he's been since the beginning of this thing. I got him for a movie called Slasher.com in 2020. Then uh, we got him for No One Lives in 2021. And yes. now we, we got him for The Scout in, uh, uh, was it uh, 2022? So I'm sure you'll be back for 2023 and 2024 at some point. Uh, I love this. It's a lot of fun, uh, even if uh, sometimes the movies aren't. But no, yeah, you know, no, it's no, funny. They're, no, they're, when they're great. They're I, great. It's funny because you 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 joke i think i feel like you joke i really hope you joke but you send me messages all the time saying what are you doing to me man like why are you torturing me they're fun and uh and you know this movie i I didn't think was that much of torture when i watched it today earlier i thought it was uh it was pretty good uh the only the only problem and okay everybody we're gonna talk about spoilers and stuff i had to make Uh sure David knows Just, this. Yep. So first of all, are we gonna are we gonna talk about this movie, or are we gonna are we gonna go through the film? Because uh, to me, this is this is this is uh, this is a story of three acts. Um, you know the the three act structure. We all know what it is. Uh, this movie is three acts. It is one getting to know them in the audition process and all that. Two that trip to the scouting location oh god yeah that took uh, which yeah, is that was which like is pretty much pretty whole, pretty whole, brutal whole uh and then and then uh the third would be uh the, the, the action, kid when the, the action finale. finally comes yeah um i will say uh, uh if you don't mind we start at the the introduction okay okay well uh, I, I i just wanted to say though real quick that this movie was not it was a horror film, but for most of the movie, it is not a horror film. You know, nope. for most of the movie, it's a comedy, uh, drama, whatever you want to call it, dramedy, yeah. you the, know, but the, mainly comedy. The horror took quite some time to arrive. Uh, usually, uh, usually with a, a film, you can expect that big moment about a half hour in. In fact, usually you can look at your watch and say, it's a half an hour. It's about to happen. Um, this one... Boy, it took a while, um, but that's because it, you know, it, it had a plan for you, and it exactly it was an intentional thing. The the first ten minutes of the movie, and we'll probably get into that, you know, a little bit or five minutes, whatever it was. I think it was five minutes. Was the opening scene uh, was mainly um, uh, was this the kill scene, you know, or whatever, you know, it was the opening kill scene, and then it has another kill scene like maybe 30 minutes in or so. Yep. Uh, and then there's right no kills 30. until like the end of the movie, like right. toward the end. So, so it w- really didn't have that much. Right. My my interest is, okay, just a, a setup here. It's uh, a very low budget indie horror film is being made. Yes. And uh, the directors, producers are looking for actors to be in the film. So that mm-hmm. that's that's your initial setup. And uh, so they're piecing together the crew that's going to be making this uh, indie horror film, which the indie horror film is called um, Terrestrial Alien. Uh, uh, that was Terrestrial Evil. No. I think that's what it's called, Terrestrial Evil. I could be, I could be no, completely I, I, wrong, but I'm I, pretty I, sure that. Well, I mean, you, because I'm, there, there's even a mention in there of like terrestrial alien. Don't those mean two different things? How can you be both? Because terrestrial, terrestrial alien. Ah, uh, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe you're right because I do remember that line. So I yeah, mean, remember because it because it was like, well, you can't be terrestrial and alien because that's two different things. Um, yeah, because what was an what's an extraterrestrial then? Right. Um, so um, I thought a terrestrial was an alien. Like I thought because, you know, I'm so confused now because I didn't look <laughs> it up or anything what a terrestrial <laughs> was. But I was, you know, you hear E.T. He's an extraterrestrial, you know, like I right. thought that's so I thought he was extra alien. I don't well, know. He, well, he's extra. Um, <laughs> but so the thing is, they're making this movie. And um to be honest, that movie sounds interesting. <laughs> like, like I was like, oh, wow, can they just make that? Can I see that movie instead? But so they're uh, p- 
piecing together the actors and crew for that. Um, and something that hit me, and you, you see this a lot um, in TV shows and movies where they're making a film. You're a filmmaker. I'm not. Um, they There's always that like montage of people really overacting of mm -hmm. you know they're just oh this guy's horrible there's no are, are you talking about for like the auditions yeah i'm talking about okay. yeah i'm talking about the auditions where there's like the older guy who's like they're like oh you're out of our age bracket that we're hiring for and he's like well i can play young and he's got gray hair and he's you know there's no way he's gonna play young enough to be in the film right um you know and so there's and there's the one girl who's like screaming and she's like Rah! and they're like whoa no not that scream um I thought they. I thought that was the girl that they went with, though, because they liked her scream. I could be wrong. But... No, no, no. The, 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 there was another girl who she said that she got a, a role in a movie where she didn't have any lines, but she did have a but she did scream, and she just started screaming in the middle of the audition. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, now uh, that girl, you know, it's one of those things where, like I said, they line up all these different. Look how bad this person is. Look how bad this person is. Uh, you know, you've seen it on American Idol. Well, where they what I did, like, there was a scene with a woman who was sort of arguing with the director about yes. the script. Yeah, she was. And yeah, she that was happens. About, yeah, that, that that's who I'm talking about. She was complaining about the name. She was complaining about the script. All right. Uh, so I guess what I'm asking is, from a from a filmmaker standpoint, I kind of roll my eyes at that and go, oh, geez, actors don't show up and immediately start like being that overacting and that ridiculous but some you tell me no i mean this isn't honestly those so the audition part though i think should have been cut shorter honestly um yeah, just it because long. it just kind of goes on a little bit too much um uh but in in all fairness i think michael calio the director wanted to put as many of, of the people he wanted to work with or friends or whatever. It's funny. I, I, I would love to have seen the uh, audition for the movie that about the auditioning, you know, like right. I want to see that. Um, but uh, Michael Calio, uh, he probably took a bunch of people, you know, just didn't want to cut everybody and stuff. And sometimes I feel like you should just because for a while it kind of drags on. I'm like, all right, or is this what the whole movie is going to be about? Like the casting of this movie. Um, but uh, yeah, it happens a lot where uh, and even happens um, on recorded, you know, Zoom, you know, uh, auditions, people just overact and they think that they are they are doing a fantastic job and you have to either dial them down or they can't be dialed down. You just go, thank you. Have a nice day. Right. You know, kind or, of thing. Uh, that, that was interesting, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which is in the movie. It's, um, yeah. It's hard to kind of make, uh, you have to just make sure people sound natural when they talk. And sometimes yes, when you do exactly. And sometimes when somebody is saying a line, you know, uh, they think that they're being natural. They think that this sounds natural to them. But when we hear it, you know, they, they just don't sound the part. You know, they don't sound natural to us. Um, I We're going to get into a little bit of um, disclaimer territory, maybe. Uh, but I thought what, watching all of those auditions, the one that kind of stuck out to me as Oh, that seems a little more natural than the others um, and a, a more of a compelling character than the others uh, was the actress who played the, the girl who ended up doing special effects for them. Mm -hmm. And you know this person, correct? Yes. Mackenzie, actually. Uh, so it's funny because I know Michael differently because I've been a fan of his since his movies, uh, since I saw his movie, Hatred of a Minute, which if you saw in one of the scenes, there was a poster of it in the, uh -huh. like the director's office or whatever. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, so I've been a fan of his and Mackenzie, I met on the set of Collision Earth, which was on, uh, was it the Asylum? The Asylum. She was the special effects or makeup, the makeup girl for like her assistant makeup girl, I think it was um, at that time. And then she, gradually moved up in Hollywood. And then this was her first, like, I think feature like acting role, you know? 
it's funny because I actually, like I said, watching the film, I thought that she had the most grounded uh, performance. Um, and I was like, oh, this girl's uh, uh, a little more natural than uh, what some of the others are. And it's funny that she's um, a makeup uh, effects person. Did Do you know if she did the masks and everything in the film? Was that her creations or? I don't think so. And I don't Just even, honestly, I don't. I looked her up on uh, IMDb and I don't even think on IMDb, it doesn't say that she even did the special effects for this movie. So I think she just acted in it, Um, uh, which I think, I think that was the funny part is that like uh, they wanted her to play the girl who ends up getting the special effects. You're doing the special effects. Well, you know, it actually, that, that uh, kind of hit me because I didn't know in advance, but, uh, there's a line in there where they t- they talk about how, oh, she's done big movies that, you know, for big budgets and bigger studios. And she's kind of slumming it being our special effects person. And I think it's it, now that you're like, oh, yeah, she's done films for the asylum, which, you know, for I mean, the asylum is you know bigger legit. than the indie. indie yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're the not micro budget, you know, they're not you know doctor strange and the multiverse of madness but yeah she was never making her sound like she did movies for marvel and now she yeah. was loving it but i think that sort of was the funny thing yeah she had, yeah um, yeah yeah you know it's kind um, of a i don't know yeah. a little yeah instead thing of, to her instead of doctor strange she'll do professor weird um you know for uh for the asylum Rich, why aren't you writing for the asylum you're, you're coming up with me some, i have you know. no idea why asylum call me <laughs> i have an idea for a shark movie that the asylum needs to make with me don't say it on here don't uh, don't I, don't give them it because they'll uh, just steal it oh i know but uh <laughs> i but, love them but they just they'll they'll you know they'll, they're looking for anything they could do to not have to you know uh to pay people for if they can you know i just i under i understand um, art of business so yeah so yeah i thought that you said her you said her name is mckenzie mm-hmm. mckenzie uh, kelly yeah, tell Mackenzie. Uh, I thought she was really the most compelling of the actors in the film. In the film, um, and uh, cool. I mean, I wonder if she did the special effects, uh, but I guess you know we'll see. I don't, know. I don't think so, but uh, maybe if Mackenzie, if you're watching, uh, you know, comment something below and let us know. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so she, she was wonderful. She was great. Um, it's, it's so weird always because I am friends with a lot of people in the, in the film industry and stuff. Bragging. And so reviewing movies that they're in, um, I, I hate sounding like I'm biased, but I mean, I actually did really enjoy this movie uh, as opposed to like probably some, some people might be like confused as like, this doesn't seem like a horror movie until the end. Then it really, you know, has the horror stuff. Right. Um, Anything else that we need to discuss when it comes to um, uh, uh, the auditions or anything? I'm fine with that because the next the next little note that I have is incredibly early in the movie before they go out and scout before they do any of this stuff. um, They're still casting the film. I'm not even sure if they have I'm not even sure if they have a crew yet there's a scene where he's like holding uh, the, the main guy is holding his head saying we're bleeding money. What are we going to do? We're almost out of cash. And I'm, and I, as the director. A, yeah. And I was watching this going, it's your third day of pre-production <laughs> and you're talking about being broke and having to shut down. Somebody did some awfully poor budget planning when making a movie well, jmu tell me you don't make your movies this way i mean generally speaking <laughs> generally speaking you should have the the money already the way that they have it is like there's supposed to be some investor that's paying them i guess later or something they talk about this yeah. secret investor who is supposed to be giving them the money or whatnot which um i felt like that was going to be something that it would end up becoming part of it, but it really they didn't really do much with that. Um, no, generally speaking, you don't. But I think that 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 was the point of the joke of like this was like a micro budget film that's even like even more micro budget than oh, sure, yeah. you know most other like films or whatever. I don't know. It well, was got- like the worst of the worst that could happen. 
I have a spoiler for you. And I don't, I, and you might not have picked this up, but the secret investor that you're talking about that they never talked about, I think, I'm guessing here, it was the band Radioactive Chicken Heads. <laughs> because this band, and I'm guessing on this completely, but he's wearing a radioactive, and this is a real band. Yeah, um, it's a real band. I've heard of them. Uh, they, he's wearing one of their shirts in like in the pre-production office. Cause I remember looking and going, it's kind of odd that he's wearing some random, ra- you know, radioactive chicken head sh- uh, shirt. And then, and then there's a uh, random a, concert. There's a random concert. that McKenzie's character, I guess, goes to. Yeah. 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 And then she goes to the parking lot and dies. Yeah. But- uh, and, and so that was like, I, why why is this happening i mean wh- like why is so much of the focus of this of the early part of this film radioactive chicken heads is getting quite a bit of coverage and uh, it just i found it interesting you <laughs> or, might have sponsored the movie i don't know um, that's what i'm saying they may have they been. might have been friends with the with michael i don't know i like maybe he's a big fan of radioactive chicken heads and he wanted to promote them as much as possible i don't well, know I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and we have Guar, so I am not going to uh, to bash a movie for having a uh, parody like uh, punkish metal band uh, kind of thing there. Um, Guar is awesome, man. Guar bar, Guar, Guar, all that stuff. Like, yep. uh, you know, um, uh, the one the ball sack lived in Williamsburg. So cool. You know. um, so I guess it. After, I mean, is there anything you need to discuss when it comes to that? Because the next part of the next part of the film is, is, I guess, what I want to get into. I mean, I, I, because you were mentioning like he, uh, he he was going crazy and saying like, oh my God, we're going to have to shut the project down. Uh, And then I guess we do, we do, we do, he goes into like the, the re, I forgot, the the casting, some more casting and like, Uh you know, narrowing everybody down, I guess, to, for the cast, right? Is that where you're going to go with next? No, I mean, uh, go, feel free to go. Um, and then he kind of gets everybody into the spots of what they're going to be. And yeah, gonna and then you, they go around the room and they tell each other who they are and what positions that they do. But um, Anastasia Elfman's character, uh, Patty, uh, she's like the main girl. She's the main, um, uh, she's going to be the scream queen in the movie and stuff, yeah. the final girl um, and everything. So she was talking about um, uh, that she didn't like, they didn't want to give her uh, the director was a little sweet on her for real and everything. And um, was like the in director love with her. And, and, Oh, and uh, this is a found footage movie in a, in a sense where uh, the film <laughs> is, the film is seen most of the film, most of the film, most of the film is seen through the, uh, the camera lens of, a documentary filmmaker who is like recording the behind the scenes of the making of the film. Yeah. His um, name was Damon, I think. Yeah. And yeah. he's also a bit sweet on, uh, on our final girl. Yeah. He likes her a lot. And then she kind of flirts with the director a little bit and stuff. And, and there's one awkward scene where the, what is it? The girl in the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the producer who's, yep. you know, woman, is talking uh denise i think her name was and she's saying to damon that uh oh they're a little sweet on each other and damon gets really like yeah. awkward after no they're that, not about it. No, they're <laughs> yeah. not i don't think yeah. so yeah 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 she doesn't she's like, like him. Okay. what are you talking about yeah uh-huh. okay and and like honestly i sort of knew um once those two started talking to each other more that 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 they were gonna be like and i guess once again we spoil it they were the they were set up they were the the people who are you know because there's also that scene where he's videotaping taylor get killed you know yeah right? uh-huh. like, yeah uh-huh. and he doesn't say anything right to anybody so i'm like okay so he's in on it and yeah. oh sure yeah yeah so he's in on it and then but whoever with the whoever with the killer, and then I was like, that's got to be, it's got to be uh, Patty because there's just who else no, would it be? I mean, yeah. yeah. So anyway, but they're all sweet on each other, and uh, so there's something going on there that I don't know if they met on there or if they had already met 
before the hand and I'm one, guessing that they'd already been met beforehand. He got the, uh, he got the job as the camera person for the behind the scenes and she uh, got called into cat the casting or whatever, you know, like they right. set it all up that way. Yep. Um, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she gets the role. Um, all the other uh, casts are, are set. Um, your friend Mackenzie uh, bites the big one. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I even messaged her today. So I finished the movie and there, it needed more Taylor. You know, I agree. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know this girl and I probably, you know, will never meet her, but uh, I think it needed more of her too. Cause I thought that um, I thought her character was compelling. And quite frankly, I liked looking at, you know, like, you know, oh, are they going to show us more special effects or, you right. know, or in like more, more, you know, prosthetics and stuff like we that. Got, we got to see her special effects <clears throat> room, but then her character didn't want anybody filming in there and, you know, checking I, her stuff yeah. out. I get it. I mean, they don't have a budget for, you know, they're not going to have, you know, it's not prey. They're not going to have a predator running around. Um, so then it goes into act two. Mm hmm. Because they, they well, because they go and they do the uh, they they go to the spot where they were going to film, but it's on fire. It's been burned out, and he, oh, he's ticked. They're losing money. How? Well, how uh, well, what's the Tiger King? How are we ever going to financially recover from this? Um, and so then they go on the road trip to go to the new scouting location that um, their their scream queen has picked out. She's found a great scouting location. Uh, that they can go film at so they're going to go check that out and i think like half the movie is is that scene pretty much like yeah, it feels and, and like it a, a good a good half the movie and it, it's really just them talking about better about classic movies <laughs> there's like hey you know texas chainsaw is great right yeah, but you know what else is great is evil dead oh you, <laughs> you know, know what else is great rosemary's <laughs> baby which I was like, that's when I knew Anastasia was the killer because she kept talking about Satan and cults. And in the beginning yeah. of the movie, we see like a cult symbol kind of thing. Yeah. And I was uh -huh. like, don't. That's my only problem with this movie, really, is like it just gives too much away. If you're going to if you're going to make a movie where a person's in a mask trying to stalk people, and you want to you want to confuse people and make people think because they even well. I'll get into more stuff later, but they, they try to like fool you in times. And I'm just like, mm, I don't buy it. I like, I I've seen too many of these movies. Let me mm. ask you this. Uh, Cause you, you mentioned how um, it was obvious that, that it was going to have a cult aspect to it mm -hmm. uh, because of the, you know, earlier uh, there is a, a, a part of the, during their long drive um, where the director's like, they're like, Hey, you know what there's not enough of there's not enough cult films there really ought to be more cult films but there really aren't any cult films and they even say we want to change the movie right and, into and, a and, cult movie right and the producer then says you think we should change this movie from a slasher film to a cult movie okay now obviously that was foreshadowing that was just and also a little tongue-in-cheek yeah 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 yeah. but it was obviously tongue-in-cheek i mean this you know you go oh well that's bad writing they were intending that i mean like it was it was obviously tongue-in-cheek yeah. did you find that cute or did you find that uh ridiculous it didn't bother me i mean i didn't even it, you know honestly it didn't phase me either way like smiled. because i'm you know nowadays movies are so meta you know um and a lot of people are starting to hate that which is a problem but uh movies are so meta that like everything's like if you're making a movie about making a movie which is what this movie is, uh -huh. right? You want to um, be careful because then you're crossing a line where you're going to have to start talking about your own movie and kind of make references to your own movie. And then once again, that becomes meta. So like, that's what happens with this. It goes from being sort of this uh, movie about uh, people going out to make a movie and then it becomes uh, something else. You know, it becomes uh, a movie about they change it from a slasher to a cult. They do a couple things, um, you know, which it's still a slasher. It's just a slasher sure. cult, you know. Movie. Did you uh, di uh, how excruciating did you find that road trip? Um, It's just I mean, was it fun? What did you think it was funny or did you think? I mean, 
I mean, it, it just seemed like you were riding with a bunch of horror nerds, you know, and which, and, yeah, and one is, girl is, and one girl we haven't mentioned yet, but there's a girl who's in like a, the social media presence. She's right. a influencer, and she's the whole. She's like everybody else that doesn't like horror. She's that person. So she's right. there listening to them talk about, you know, God knows what, uh, you know, uh, but I will say this, knowing Michael uh, enough, um, I loved a couple things. First of all, I love that he was the DP of his own movie, just like he said in the thing, he's the director yeah. and, and mm-hmm. the director of DP or director of photography. Um, and then uh, he also may, made mention to both Gunnar Hansen and Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Gunnar Hansen uh, and Bruce Campbell were both a part of Hatred uh, Hatred of a Minute. Um, Gunnar was the one of the main actors in it or whatever was a big part in that. And then uh, Bruce Campbell uh, produced it. So they oh, wow. make mention of both of those guys. At the end of the movie, there's a, uh, you know, we miss you, Danny Hicks. Uh, Danny was a part of Evil Dead 2. So there was a lot of these things that you know very much um and he was also a big either michigan or somebody um which i think michael is from if i'm correct i could be wrong he could be from anywhere else but um i I think he's from from anywhere else yeah i have have no idea he could be but anyway the point was that he was a big you know like this all of his stuff was the a love letter to his his stuff so sure yeah i think that um you know, it's it's fun when you when you're with your friends and you're talking about, you know, whether it's, you know, who would win if they fought each other or, you know, tell me what your favorite cult movie is. Tell me, tell me what your favorite slasher film is. It did have a very scream like uh, feel when he's like, you know, right. what's your favorite horror film. Right. You know, I, I think that, I think stuff like that is we've all done it with our friends where we've, you know, tried to out cool each other by, oh, my favorite film is this. Um None of but, people say Rosemary's Baby, but if I were there, I would have said that movie bored me to fucking death. I'm sorry. Um, I uh, first of all, uh, just to because we didn't really do a great inter- introduction of who I am. Um, I run a five hundred one c three mental health nonprofit called Geek Wellness Education, and we do uh, well, it's we use horror, science fiction, and superheroes to reach people with mental health in, uh, information. Um, I preface that by saying. Uh, Rosemary's Baby is a movie I've never seen I never will see it Uh, the director um, can go to hell uh, and he can take the guy from Jeepers Creepers with him and um, yeah so that's my thoughts on Rosemary's Baby I've never seen it and never will Um, but uh, yeah I mean I I think that you know that that whole scene of well you know the whole in fact to be cut to a commercial while they were in the van and when it came back from a commercial, they were still chatting it up about horror films in the van. And I was like, Oh my God, what's the world's worst commercial break. <laughs> um, but, but um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Tubi does that. They, if yeah. that's the weirdest, because there was no real place for them to, to do it in that particular long stretch of time. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, maybe, maybe that, maybe that scene could have been shorter. Um but um once yeah. again i think a lot of this could have used some some clipping and editing and and whatnot it's just it it felt like there was a lot of stuff they wanted to put in it a lot of time i mean it's some it's a micro budget film about making a micro budget film i i'll give them I'll, I'll give them that that they really didn't it wasn't like hollywood making a movie about people who had micro you know with micro budget you know oh sure like yeah. this was a real this was the real deal um so it felt like that too uh, oh when they when they were driving in the city and this is before they even started the long trek to uh, where the Scream Queen told them to go. Right. When they were driving in the city and they found that their warehouse was burned out, they drove past a car accident and they were all like, oh, did you see that? Oh, whatever. Um, so that was a real car accident, right? There's no. <laughs> I think <laughs> so, which I, I don't know if they. Like, because that, that was awkward when I watched it because I was like, wait, did they just literally film like 
a car accident. Yeah, they, fil- yeah, they, they, yeah they filmed some random car accident, and and it was one of those things where it's like I think that the camera was just on while they were driving, and they were like, "Hey, you know what? React to whatever you see." Um, but yeah, so uh, um, I found that a little humorous. I, I felt that awkward, man, because I was just oh, like, yeah. I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to be seeing something like i don't know if they went back out and got everybody's uh you know what if, if i don't know what uh as even a filmmaker i don't know what you're allowed to videotape without uh an L, you know some some sort of uh paperwork signed or whatever release form so i don't know if there's an accident if that like counts some kind of um public public thing but it's not my movie so just yeah yeah me. i mean hey you know, um do your thing yep. uh so uh where were they driving to come on uh so apparently uh, out, outside the, of somewhere i don't remember well it this is santa clarita later so i don't know if it, the whole thing a lot of it was filmed in santa clarita which isn't like in los angeles proper you know or whatever it's outside of los angeles don't, um, do, don't do this to me well you're right it is it, it is because it's outside of the tmz yeah that they, was they, weird that they mentioned that I, they I mentioned it several times of hey guys you know that website tmz well they got it from the tmz of whatever the 30 mile zone and we're gonna go outside the 30 mile zone and then later it's like Hey guys, we're outside the TMZ. We don't have cell service. And I was like, look, thank you. I know what TMZ is, but the, <laughs> the, thank you for explaining what the website, uh, where the website got its name from. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so it was just a couple of those things that are, um, it, it's just like a little like weird that they got hung up on that little detail of, you know, we're going to. It know, happens. It didn't bother me. Yeah, no, I, no, don't no, even, I, I, I didn't even remember that. Like I yeah. remember the one girl saying something about TMZ on the phone with the cops, but that was it. Like, that's all I remembered. I don't even remember them saying this, you know, and it wasn't like I wasn't listening or not watching. It's just yeah. like, there's so yeah, much, it just, there was yeah. so much that they talked about that after a while. If it, yeah, it yeah, really uh, wasn't that important, I don't. What, do you, How much of a, uh, how much of a script do you think this movie had? I mean, it's. Um, I think it had, it had a script. Um, it felt very, it, it did feel kind of scripted. Um, it, it did feel like people were allowed to go off script a little bit, you know, at times or whatever, but I feel like it, it was scripted. Um, just because, um, well, A, it was also written by two people. It was Michael and uh, another person, Anthony, uh, I, I don't have his name on me. Sorry, but no, that's Anthony okay. Lee that Leone is, or something. I don't, I don't have his name on me as the worst last name I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Okay, finally, we get to the uh, the area where the Scream Queen has picked out this spot, um, and uh, they think she's dead. Yeah. Uh, because they find a dead body that's got her face all mangled, and it turns oh, out... Oh, before we, before we get to that, though, mm-hmm. before we get to that, um, I do want to mention something. So, the Scream Queen girl yeah. is the one who found them the place, right? Sure, yeah, and, yeah, because yeah. it's, right. it's, a, it's a setup for right, yeah, to kill just, them. right. So, you go down this road that apparently the cult is a part of, right, or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's a cult that was gotten down this road, and then they do a kind of a prank where they get out and pretend like they got oh, killed. Man, you forgot Can about you, that, didn't you? Oh, you know, I, actually, I didn't forget about it, I had blocked it out of my, out of my brain because of post traumatic stress. Um, that whole stretch where the director, I mean, the director and the producer got out of the, got out of the truck and played a prank on them. Oh, did that give you like anxiety or something? No, no, it was so painful. It was, uh, I mean, like, it was just like, my, 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 my thought of it was why is a director doing this? I mean, don't, isn't time money? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, I thought, I thought that was the whole point was we need to get here and start. And honestly, and, and this, this might be a, um, uh, like, 
I, I guess it, it doesn't it doesn't matter as much because the cast is part of the crew too or whatever. But generally speaking, you don't take your cast out to a location scout. You just take uh, a couple crew members. You right. know, uh, you don't need like everybody. You don't need your social media person there. You know, especially in the dark where they can't take pictures or they can't do no, anything and, with it. And, and as they explain. They're outside the TMZ and she has no cell cell. Right. Service. So there's nothing so, she can do. Yeah. So there's no reason for her to be there at all. Except um, otherwise to kill her for right. the movie. Right. But 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 explain why the director would make that decision of I don't know, because I thought the director was in on it. Uh so that was the thing that surprised me. Because where did the did the director get killed? I don't remember. Yeah, he did. He uh, he was uh he was dispatched um yeah, he was killed. Yeah, because he must have been like one of the first people. Because yeah, he like right when they got there, he was like I think he might have been the the first one. Like right, like right after they find, uh, right after they find the dead body that they thought was the scream queen. Right. Um, I, I so think he must have died right like quickly the, because yeah, it was so. There was a lot of them like running around, whatever, and then uh-huh. the scream queen was dead. Which yeah, not about running, was, it was you more know, of a fast walk, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> they tried running um probably told hey if you trip and fall you're gonna hurt yourself so let's let's you know let's not let that happen uh we don't have the budget for insurance here <laughs> you know yeah. that kind of thing um so the one thing that really bothered me uh after i watched it and after i found out like you know i was right about the the scream queen being the being the setup for everything um was that um what really bothered me was the fact that she set the whole thing up, right? And mm-hmm. then when she went down that road, they were down that road, oh, yeah. she acted like she had no idea about everything in there. And I'm like, so you know about this location? You got them this location, but you don't you don't know about the road that literally leads you to the to the place. And then like, why would they be okay with going to this place down this road? that obviously a cult was a part of, you know, uh, at that point you might be like, you know what, let's like, that's where I was thinking it was going to go where it was going to go. You know what? I I changed my mind. Let's go back because this is really creepy and I don't like. Right. It it makes sense why she would be like lying to them or whatever, but that particular lie made it seem as if, she wasn't familiar with the place that she said she was familiar right. with. And, um, and so therefore, and like, you know, given the circumstances, um, the other people should be going, Hey, uh, what's up with this? And she should go, no, look, we actually filmed a cult movie here last year. This is all stuff that was, you know, or whatever, you know, right. Uh, finding some excuse, um, finding some excuse or like my brother owns this land or something. And right. You but, know, and I don't know if you want to say he's in a cult, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, let's say, like he, he, you know, he, uh, he's told me like that there's been, you know, no problem, something like that, anything like that, because yeah. you are bringing people to a place where murders have apparently happened. That's the legends, you know, or whatever. Like you can see the ghost of the the person if you, you know, yeah, yeah, all yeah. this stuff. So they knew all this stuff. I don't know why. The director didn't look back at the uh, the girl and say, "Why? Why are you like? Why are you, why, yeah, why, why are we going down here? You? Like this sounds like a bad idea." Uh-huh. And and then once again saying, "You know, let's turn around." That's what. And that's where I would have went with the story. I would have had them go, "Let's turn around," and then all of a sudden there's like a cult member or something. Right. You know, like waiting for them and you know like blocks them from leaving or yeah because at the end of the day there was no cult members there was just her and the uh and the the camera guy and the stooge yeah yeah and even like um the social media person yeah Mm -hmm. i would assume she'd be like look i gotta i don't feel comfortable Yeah. yeah i mean like first of all i don't even like you people okay i just thought i'd take this gig as a as an acting credit but i don't like y'all I don't like this culty stuff. I don't like being out in the middle of nowhere. I don't like not having access she, to my phone. She barely complained. And and when she did complain, it didn't 
it was complained earlier about just them talking about the movie stuff, you know, right. Like, wow, I'm with a bunch of horror nerds, you know, like right. she didn't, you know, she even talked about lumberjack or something. They're like, not real life stuff. We're talking about horror, you know, like I thought that was sort of funny. She was, like I said, she was every, every other person who doesn't like horror. That's who she represented, which but was it, cool. But as part of that character, there needs to be a, don't go in there. Yeah, because because we all know that character of or, or or she should have stayed in the car. Right. When they went in to like look for the girl and everything like she went with them. And I was like, why would you do that? Like, why? have yeah, you know, um, and I, I thought it was hilarious that the dude literally was keeping the, the camera on. This is why I hate found footage movies. Yeah. And this is my biggest problem with found footage movies. And it made sense for this movie. So it didn't bother me because he was part of, he was in on the whole thing. So right. when they were like, why are you still filming? He's, you know, he's filming. Right. He kind of like shuts, shuts it off. But most of the time, I, that's the question I always have for like Blair Witch Project or these found footage films where the people are like, running around like getting chased by somebody and they you know they're leaving the camera on and they're oh my god and it looks cool but after a while i'm like why are you why are you still filming like stop like i know it makes sense for the movie but yeah i know i know you need this footage for the film right but but in the in the context of survival human, human beings trying to survive why i'm sorry but yeah if i were filming something on my phone and then somebody were coming after me and my phone was kind of in, you know, in my way or whatever. I would drop my phone. I would drop my iPhone to save my life. I'm sorry. I People might think that's crazy because I'm on my iPhone all the time. But I would drop my fucking iPhone in a second to, to if save, it were to, to save, save my, my life. Li- to save my life, I would throw your iPhone at the killer and then I would throw you at the killer. Yes, uh, exactly. So, so yeah. There you um, go. Yeah. So the yeah. It, so there's a little bit there that strained credibility, um, and then it seemed uh, very quickly. And I apologize if anyone can hear my dog. Uh, yeah, I, it's uh, okay. Uh, I recently got one of the Invigo uh, beagles. I don't know if uh, people around the country have heard about it, but uh, there's a big story about um, a, uh, a a a lab that was uh, selling beagles to be tested on and oh, uh, experimented oh, that sucks. on. And uh, there were 4,000 of them and they were being treated horribly and they were being, uh, they, they were dying and they were, um, I got one of the first ones and I, I named her Captain Cuddles and, uh, and uh, she's great, but she's over there barking. So uh, that happens. Apolog- it I apologize. doesn't bother me. Um, so the, um, once the, once the killing starts, uh, they're running around and there's not too much left of the film. Mm-mm. Um you know, the actual horror part is, uh, is very, is pretty brief. Um, and then we, uh, get a, get the reveal pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing I kind of bummed out about because it was a lot of darkness and stuff for most of the times that the killer was around and you could barely see the, the mask, you know, now that mask right there looks so cool, you know, but I don't even think I saw much of that, you know, in the movie, you know, as much as I would have liked. Yeah. Yeah. Not, uh, you know, it's, it's tough because ultimately this is not a slasher film <laughs> or, I mean, it is, but I, I mean, it, it is, whole, but it isn't. Yeah. The whole point is it's a slasher film, but it's a cult movie. Um, but it's also a comedy. So right. it's got a lot of like little things throughout. And most of it is, is, trying to be comedy you know well i see trying to be that sounds r- rude but like no, you know I mean, it's got a lot of jokes that are kind of hit or miss you know it didn't yeah, make I me mean, i don't think it's an insult to the film to say that it's not uh, you know the naked gun <laughs> you right know? I mean, it, and was it trying to be like a parody well, or yeah anything? i mean it's uh, i mean there's some pretty cute lines in it and then there's some jokes that you know fall flat it happens mm-hmm. um but uh I, uh, you know, it, it didn't take long before the reveal happened. And we found out that, uh, the scream queen was the killer. Um, and, uh, did you, 
she then it turns out it's a scream queen and she has this stooge who's the who's the videographer and then she turns on him uh considering that she then plans to go do this again and again and again (laughs) she has to find another guy that'll agree to yeah does it make sense to kill the guy who's helping you or does it make more sense to say now let's go film another movie because now she needs to find another stooge I know because I don't think she was planning to do a sequel. You know, that's how I got it at the end. Is that like because that people called up and I was like, ah, they're setting up for the scout too. You know, um, uh, but no, no. It, I, I mean, well, she she certainly is planning to do. To, I mean, she's planning to go do another movie and kill mm-hmm. them too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, um, you know, in the end, there's another warehouse that's on fire, and you know you're supposed to think okay well she got another role in another horror film she set that warehouse on fire and now she's going to lure that group back to this house and she's going to kill them there too so she's basically now a serial killer that kills uh indie uh horror movie um you know uh cast and crew so um again it i'm not sure it makes a lot of sense to kill your ally um yeah because then you have to go find another one yeah because now you got to hope that uh the next the next uh movie has somebody in the cast that is uh you know thirsty you know well i mean and and that's the other thing it's like i don't know if because in the beginning of the movie remember there's some girl being uh tied up the opening scene is like some girl tied up and she's yelling at the like so i assumed either that was the end of another movie that she was a part of or whatever and and stuff probably the short film she was talking about yeah and uh and that camera guy was you know it looked like a camera was following them around or whatever so i'm wondering if that guy had been there for that one and stuff and then had to pretend like he didn't know her in the uh sure when he met her but we didn't we never got that we never got that information so we don't we don't know either way their relationship felt very 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 rushed because uh we watched it happen on camera and then he pledged his devotion to her and joined her cult and maybe they knew each other beforehand maybe they didn't um and so yeah so we didn't really get uh, the development that you need in mm-hmm. order to make it a real um, interesting cult film, but sadly we didn't. But um, I don't know. I I was sort of I was kind of into the that their relation, you know, their relationship. Obviously, she didn't care about him. You know, evidently, you know, she murders him at the end, and um, I, I don't know why either at the end yeah. because I guess they had to have that like you know that final stab, you know, or whatever for the, to like, you know, but I'm like, well, who's, then, she gonna, the, like, who's she going to send this to? And then the final, like, uh, you know, sexy killer scene at the, in the end. Like, uh, I mean, oh. yeah. Who's, who's going to watch this film? Because but. she was sending it to somebody like some American international films or something, some company at the end, you know, yeah, she, down was, she was submitting that film to a film festival or, or no, like, like a film distribute, a distribution company. Yeah. Um, she was trying to get distribution for her, for, for the, the scout. You yeah. Know. For, yeah. For the scout film. And um, I mean, it's actual murders. <laughs> I mean, so right. Like what's, what studio is picking this thing up? I mean, and how, like, I guess with editing, you can make something look cool, but like, or work, but like, who's going to watch a movie where half the movie is the behind the scenes of a movie that doesn't get made, you know, without it being like, sort of like, like we watch it, you know, where it's sort of fun and, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I yeah. don't know, like. How deep does this meta go? So I know I'm trying to think. So she's she's making a movie about people making a movie about people making a movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So it's like that mirror where it's like a mirror mirror images that keep going down, and you know, you know, I don't know. It wasn't like this was sort of fun. Um, uh, having you know. You know, when you said when you said to me, oh, man, you know, you must hate me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I thought this was 
I was scared, you know, because I was like, oh, shit, I don't know what if this movie's even what this movie's really about. Like, I, all I know is it's, you know, it's got McKenzie in it and uh, it's directed by Michael. Like, that's all I knew. Yeah. And they also um, have just wrapped and or not just wrapped, but have just finished uh, everything for um, a uh i think i think they have but for a christmas movie called the la christmas story and um i'm guessing sort of you know very christmas whatever like uh holiday i i don't want to say lifetime but you know it sounds like it you know uh kind of movie um and and all most of the cast are back for that movie so i think that's really cool i would I, i hope that they would uh make mention like we should watch this movie called the scout you know right (laughs) right 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 you know kind of wink and a nod but they probably didn't um but even even the old guy i saw in the uh thing like mckenzie has got a bigger part in that one you know because i think this was just a test to see how she felt comfortable about acting and and everything and she did a really great job and so they brought her back for the next one and um got a bigger part in that um so it, it'd be fun to see all these people. Um, did you know, by the way, Anastasia Elfman, the main actress, yeah. the girl who's P- Patty, she's actually related, or she's married to Richard Elfman, who is the director of, um, God, what, ooh, oh man, she's going to kill me because she's friends with me, but I know I've seen his, uh, he's done a lot of, uh, of so he did a Shrunken Heads, for a uh, full moon. Um, oh, interesting. And do, in fact, I'm going to actually go one further. Did you know that... Um, Forbidden Zone. That was his most famous uh, yeah, well, what, what, what did you say his name was? Uh, Richard Elfman. Yeah, Richard Elfman and Jenna Elfman, right? Our brother and sister, yep, I believe. Or, yeah, I think so. Or you, or you, said, who, uh, you said she's married. They're, who's she married no, to? No, no. So he's married to Anastasia Elfman. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah was, Anast- Anastasia. And Jenna yeah. Elfman's actually married to um, Danny Elfman. Danny yes. Elfman and is Danny the Elfman composer. Is married to, is, does Danny Elfman know these other Elfmans? Oh, they're all, they're all related. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, Danny and Richard are brothers. And uh, I guess Shanna is a uh, uh, sister, uh, was a sister-in-law or whatever um, to uh, Richard and Richard is married to Anastasia. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm learning uh, um, six degrees <laughs> well, I mean, of, I, I, yeah, six, six degrees, degrees of, of Danny Elfman. Of Danny um, Elfman. There you go. <laughs> um, which he's, you know, he's done some films too. So uh, he, we'll yeah, hard. well, he's wonderful. Uh, I, I love his, uh, the movies he composes you know yep. so so yeah um i mean do you have final thoughts or anything i mean i you know honestly um it, it was a low budget film it was obviously <laughs> a micro budget indie film i've seen worse I, I think some of the acting you know was you know was okay i mean uh i don't i think I, the I movie was think, good i mean yeah, i think like i don't, I said, I don't it, think the oscars are gonna call but um i don't think this was made for the oscars yeah um, it, yeah it wasn't made for that so i, I think that yeah um I, I thought the acting was as um put its way we've all seen micro budget films where the acting is just atrocious yeah uh and, and even in the beginning like we mentioned before they they tried to make that look like those are the people that are trying to get in this movie or the people right. who can't act or whatever right. or but, or whatnot for the most part i think it's fine i mean the the um the the random guy who's in the film he's not bad you, you know the 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 dude who's in the film that that talks about horror movies a lot he's not bad no i like um, him you um, know? um so yeah all, all in all he was I, also what drove me nuts sometimes is like the the girl says i'm you know when they go around the room explaining who they are and what they're doing she was like, I'm the producer and I'm also the production manager and the first assistant director. And I was like, I mean, even on a, a low budget film, you can't be both. You know, you can't be the production manager and the first assistant director. Now, I don't know if other people have done that before, but like that's two completely different jobs that need two different people. Now, on a micro budget level, maybe not because the, the production manager is a um, 
basically is just somebody who manages things in office and sometimes right. will, you know, but the first assistant director needs to be there on set the whole time and make sure. Uh, and uh, was it the other guy was the one guy you were talking about was doing um, scheduling and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I hope he knew how to do scheduling and everything, because that is not, that is not an easy task, you know, or I think that's what he was doing. Do you think when he was scheduling out the day, do you think he included them stopping on the road and getting out and scaring the people? (laughs) I'm sorry. That's that stuck with me of like, really? But but see, that's not even, I know. I know. I got No, I I mean, I'm just saying that's not even, um, uh, part of the uh, they schedule the uh was it the um they schedule like a block for location scouting right sure, yeah. so it would be like oh we have five hours you know f- to be at the set and check this stuff out right once again who goes to a set at night for location scouting that's just that bothered me a little bit you know like i was just like i don't i don't buy that the because they started out during the day and they went all the way out to Santa Clarita to, to find this location. That seemed like that's a lot of gas that goes with the budget. That's a lot of, you know, like that's a lot of waste. Why can you find something or just wait till that investor from radioactive chicken heads uh, paid you, you know? They're, they got a new album that's dropping. Or so, <laughs> they're they're know, too busy. When, when that when that hits platinum, they'll they'll get you the money. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that the th- one thing that bothers me is, and this is not necessarily about this film because I don't I don't know movie making, um, but I think that if you're gonna do a movie about a job, um, people who do that job should watch the film and say, that's how it's done. You know, like, I, verisimilitude. Does this seem real to me? Um, and I think that, you know, if you're saying this is a movie about making a movie and that ain't how you make movies, well, then that's, at some point you're like, oh, geez, man. I mean, these are people making a movie and they're making a movie not the way you make a movie. So, right. I mean, and like I said, I don't know that because I don't, I've never made a movie. See, that's, that's what most Hollywood people think, you know, is like most audience members. It, it's just like you do a movie about the military, right? And somebody's wearing a certain badge or something. And somebody in the Marines might be like, you can't wear that, you know, right? Like that's not, you know, you know, the uniform. Me, a person just watching a movie about the Marines and never being a Marine, I'll look at that and go, oh, that, oh that's cool. You know, right? Right. But, well, but I think that um, what's really um, – my friends that are uh, nurses, you know, they were people that work in hospitals and stuff, mm-hmm. they'll watch these, you know uh, – ER. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll watch those types of, of, of shows, Grey's Anatomy or whatever, and just pick through of – that would kill someone that's never done. That's not hygienic. That's this, that's this. And I, and I think that like, you know, when you're made, and I understand it's not made for them to critique, but if you're saying this exists in the world of a hospital, mm-hmm. then it, then it needs to exist in the world of a hospital mm-hmm. and people who work in hospitals should be able to say, yeah, it's pretty much how it is. There's a little artistic license, but yeah. So it's, it's, it, you know, like I said, if you're saying that, the things they're doing aren't what a micro budget or whatever studio or uh, whatever a micro budget filmmaker would do. Eh, it's a little disappointing. I wish they would have done that, but yeah, I whatever. don't know. I, I think all in all, they did a good job um, with, with that stuff. It just like, like the little things bothered me, like the scouting and stuff, whatever the scouting night, whatever things like that just bother me just because I'm just like, I would I would never scout at night because you just can't see and you yeah, can't which, take yeah. pictures and you great can't. great we scouted it now what because we didn't see crap yeah so or we scouted it we can't you know like okay then are they going to just go back home because they weren't going to start recording anything you know they weren't going to start shooting so like what well, other than you know so it it sort of bothered me in that sense like that things like that happen 
Um, but it, it all goes to like uh, movies like Urban Legends 2, Final Cut. There's a Hollywood film and they don't know. Some of the times I'm like going, la, why are they doing that? Like, that doesn't sound like a, you know, a scene in a movie. You know, right, this would right, not yeah. this would not happen. Well, I mean, and, and, and they, they, they say, well, the audience will never notice. You're right. Well, but the people who make movies right. are going are gonna to notice. But see, there's not the audience that they want. They don't That's care true. about yeah, those people. They want the That's average show who watches horror films and knows nothing about making a horror film to watch it and go, "That's cool," you know. Yeah, I hear and, you. And they go and become filmmakers, and then they're like, "That's completely not right." right. But oh well. Oh darn it! Yeah, uh, I the, love that movie, but now it gets a less as you know less of a star because you know whatever. Right. But yeah, uh, I mean, overall, I mean, definitely not. Uh, I mean, and honestly, the, the other movies you, you made me watch were worse. Not, yeah, they're not. They're not. None of them are awful movies. Um, they're micro budget. They're um, I mean, this, well, this, this one's more micro budget than the last film. Uh, uh, the, one, the, the WWE studio one. Yeah, well, that had Tyrus in it. And stuff, yeah, you no know, one lives like, or whatever it was called. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, no yeah, one lives. yeah don't compare this movie to no one lives no one lives might as well be avatar 2 right uh, i mean this is a low budget film go in with those expectations uh, they say micro budget that's a very very big term you know for indie films and that's another thing is this movie is is about micro budget filmmaking and when i'm a micro budget filmmaker myself so when i see this i I go, oh, okay, you know, that's kind of cool that they're they're doing it. But, you know, if, if somebody sees it and says, oh, they go to location scouts at night or or they, um, you know, or, or they have like every person playing like every, you know, doing every role. That doesn't happen on all micro budget films. Now, that happens on, all, on ones that really need it. You know, right. like, you know, they need to double up on crew or whatever, or right. have the actors do crew as well and right. be comfortable I'm, with that. I'm going to star in the movie and hold the overhead mic. Right. Well, that happens. It. I've had people do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, I've had uh, my boom person actually in shots. And so we'd have to have somebody else just go hold the boom. So oh. it's, you know, it, it happens. It, it does. But it's also... You know, you know what? Um, props for uh, making a movie on nothing. By the way, my 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 tip for any low budget, micro budget people who do want to have like regular crew aside from there, find crew members that don't like to act. Then you can't put them in a movie, and they have to just do that one one thing. I have a I have a uh, my new boom guy. Well, not new. It's been around since two thousand and ten, I think. Yeah since i first started new. so yeah he's not new Dude, but uh 12 years yeah yeah well i, I say that because he hasn't been i haven't used him all the time so oh, gotcha. uh but yeah so he um uh he doesn't like to act you know he, he barely likes pictures like or whatever you know he wants uh he wants to sort of be doing his job and that's it so i like that you know that's cool. my my tip for for micro budget filmmakers who who don't want to have uh, an actor also be the, the boom guy, you know? I gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, understood. So, yeah. Well, uh, so, yeah. if you were to give this a, a star rating out of five. Oh, boy. Um, well, again, my I refuse to give it a star rating. Um, I, I have to give it a... That was interesting. I have to give it that review. Oh, Okay. Because of because of the scene early in the film where they specifically talk about that. So how many of that was interesting do you give it out of five? <laughs> oh, you refuse to, huh? Uh -huh. Um, how many that was, in well, especially when you consider what that was interesting means in the film. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go down the, yeah, I'll go down the middle on it because, you know, I, I don't think it was, you know, for what it was, a, sure, why not? You know, it had some cool stuff in it, and you know, is that three? Right. Uh, no, I'll, I'll go down the middle. I, I, I can cut a star in half. Oh, so two and a half. Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, you know, I, I would say I would say three and a half for me. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, I 
you know, it, it wasn't like, you know, my favorite low budget uh, thing. And in fact, I'm really looking forward to the Christmas one. I know that's maybe not even your cup of tea, but uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, I like Michael. I think he's uh, got a lot of talent um, as a director. Um, also, apparently as a DP, because I, I like his shots were cool. I could, you know, like I thought yeah, he was yeah. literally that other guy that we see every now and then damon you know but yeah, it wasn't I mean, I'm sure and, and, and keep in mind um you know i mean i'm pretty like i as far as like five stars i can't i mean what i could name three films i'd give five stars to i mean so right, I, right, I, I, tend I mean to be very much a you know this was a you know th- uh, this was okay movie uh so yeah i mean I, um sure watch it why not yeah you know, well, I mean, I, there's, I, 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 i've seen it. a lot of worse movies i've seen i mean there's um you know what i'm gonna name them because i have some friends who have made some uh low budget films <laughs> that were freaking atrocious you know what maybe i would i'm not comparing this to the godfather i'm comparing it to my friends who've made low budget films maybe i am gonna give this five stars uh <laughs> <laughs> because it was way better than some things that i'll i'll tell you off mike <laughs> um but uh but yeah um yeah, so I mean, yeah, I, I'll give it a three compared to other micro budget films I've seen. All right. Well, thank you, uh, David. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Um, is there anything you'd like to like share with everybody? Like, this will be in October, you know, next month. So, you know, is there anything you would like to just shout um, out? Well, I mean, the. Um my nonprofit is constantly doing stuff. Uh, the stuff we have coming up is a lot of stuff in schools. So it's not anything that I would be promoting. Uh, it's a lot of mental health stuff for school children. Um, I do have, for those of you who are into comic cons, not horror cons, but comic cons, uh, my, uh, comic con is heroes assemble. Uh, it is December 10th in Richmond, Virginia at the Dewey Gottwald uh, event center, which is right behind the science museum. Um, and of course you can check, uh, out all the work we do, uh, which is very geeky. Um, it's, you know, it's geek wellness education. Um, and, uh, you know, at, on social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, which I never use cause it's garbage. I- uh, it, I've been uh, kicked off Facebook, so I've been using uh, Twitter a lot lately. Oh, uh, Twitter is the land of the damned. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any interest in it. Uh, but on Facebook and Instagram, I am at GWE Contact, and we're always talking about geeky stuff there, and also mental health stuff. So uh, people can follow me there. All right, awesome. Um, well, thank you so much. This has been uh, a great uh, show and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, listening, uh, check, check me out tomorrow for another episode. I'm not sure exactly what's, what's going to happen, but I guess you'll see. Um, it's always a new, new, interesting surprise. What, <laughs> what ends up 31 days, 31 days. All right. Well, thank you guys so much and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.